This I dig of. Mm. This. Mm. This. Uh, uh, and we're gonna get a wonderful look at this classic tune, This I Dig of You. Now, check out how you can get more videos like this one. Just navigate to Bruce Gregory Video on Demand. When you get to the site, you can browse videos in a wide variety of categories. Each video covers a different topic and has bonus content and supporting documentation. There's even a free trial option. Don't forget to use your promo code to get a discount off your first purchase. And the link for that promo code is in the description down below. Now, if you dig the video, throw it a like, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell notification because that's going to let you know every time I upload a new video. Of course, the channel releases new videos on every Tuesday and every Friday. So let's get started. is where you get my catchphrase, this I dig of you. Of course, when I was a young jazz student, I heard a jazz professor say, man, you dig? And I was like, dig what? <laughs> it took me a while. Of course, there's a couple different jazz phrases around there. And one I use a lot, of course, is dig and a lot of others. And people give me some looks like, where did you just come from? But of course, it's part of the vernacular. And I guess to be a jazz musician, you got to talk like a jazz musician. Maybe that's half the battle. I'm not sure. But this is a great, great tune, This I Dig of You. Now, it's one that I really love. And you've heard me talk about it before if you visit any of my live programs. Because of the time it was written, it was written during the hard bop era. But of course, into the 60s. And it really has a happy upbeat flavor to it, but that was not necessarily indicative of some of the hard bop era with the minor two fives and the minor sounds. And of course, as we got further into Ornette Coleman and John Coltrane's explorations, a lot of things became more free. And of course, my mentor, Jackie McLean, was totally into that world of free jazz, but not this particular tune. This I Dig of You really has some expert ideas around it. Now, let's start with the melody and give it a listen. in a lot of ways, harmonically and the melody. Of course, the melody is like this. And he brings it to that dominant because it goes to the four chord and then, and then chromatic two fives. And then repeat. Once again, and then the ending, and that's the entire melody. Man, I love it because you can play off of it so well. It's just a fantastic one. One word about melodies and all the charts I provide you on either BruceGregory.com or VHX.TV site. All of those are interpretations. I really take it to interpret the melody. Of course, I learn it very straight. And that's one way that you should approach it. However, I do take a lot of artistic freedom when it comes to learning a melody. That's the way that you've got some inflection or creating some swing. Joe Pass always used to say, keep things moving. Fill it up and keep it swinging. Of course, that's really the way that you can get around the melody and really make it your own. Now, what are we talking about in terms of harmony? Nothing crazy. There's a lot of different ways you can approach the A section, which really kind of pedals on an F. 
but what's happening is it's B flat major seven to C minor seven. Now, you can play it straight like that, and I think that's the original harmony where it would just go between. And that pedals over that F. Later on in the tune, your bass player probably would be walking those changes. However, the way I played it is I basically took it up to D minor 7, because remember, the 3 chord is the same as the 1 chord, it just adds a different level of harmony, so I'm playing it like this. And then it gets to the 2-5, to the 4. I'm thinking 4 chord right over there. Of course, a D minor 7 flat 5 to the 3 chord. And then right to a chromatic 2-5, which we dig it, D flat minor 7. And in 2-5 to home. And that's the entire harmony of the tune. It's really not that hard. If you think about it, it's kind of a modified blues without going to the five chord. It goes to the four chord and then kind of chromatically walks down back to the one in a kind of a back cycling fashion. <laughs> What am I doing in terms of solo strategies with this tune? Nothing ridiculous. I'm really kind of playing it diatonically because the tune really has that feel. He basically is walking up the scale with the melody. So right there, it's all B flat as far as I'm concerned on that A section. Really, that's everything that I'm doing. And of course, if you looked at my lesson on Autumn Leaves, where I talk about accenting chord changes, particularly during soloing when something's in the same key, and this one actually is, then what you can do is start to really pull out notes within the chord changes that are diatonically to the key. So of course, here we've got B flat major 7 and we've got C minor 7. I'm thinking about the chord changes and the reason I put in D minor 7 is I can start to accent some of the notes of that particular chord as well when I'm soloing in that A section. Check it out. <laughs> So it's not really that complex. Of course, I get a 2-5 to the 4. You know I'm going right to the 4 with an E-flat major scale. As soon as I get to that D minor 7, I'm thinking one chord again. Now, I can play over the D minor, and of course there I would be thinking F major if I wanted to play directly over it. But really, in my mind, I'm thinking of that D minor, of course, and all the other tunes where we have a minor 7 flat 5 that precedes a 3 chord, I'm kind of thinking of it as the 1 chord. When I get to that chromatic 2-5, I can think purely over that. So I'm basically thinking D-flat Dorian over that. And that's everything in terms of solo strategies with the tune. It's really not that complex. You can kind of get away with playing in B-flat playing in E-flat, and other than that wrinkle where you're kind of in a D-flat Dorian mode, you really are staying back to B-flat. Now, there is that transition piece I talked about where we're going to the three chord, and if you want to play over that to give it some flavor, of course, that is something you can do as well. Me, I really don't see it so much of a transition because I feel like going from E-flat back to B-flat is enough of a transition. Sometimes at the tempo of this tune, sliding in another chord change sometimes sounds a little overwhelming. And I feel like it gets lost in the shuffle in terms of soloing with this particular tune. However, that is your choice. And of course, that's a great one to really think about. <laughs> can't say enough about this I dig and dig of you. This is a great 
great tune. It's one that just has a flavor and a flavor of New York City, in my opinion, late at night when the jam is hot. Don't forget to really think about all those solo strategies I talked about and keep it simple. Make sure you're playing things that you can play and that you can get under your fingers and you're not reaching so far out that it really doesn't make sense melodically or harmonically. Now, if you dig this video, make sure to check out my video on Midnight Blue and all the other videos on the VHX.TV site. Of course, the channel releases new videos on Tuesdays and Fridays. And don't forget to check out the new series on Wednesdays, Jazz Standards You Need to Know. And I will see you next time. Peace.